Look what arrived from Resi. Fragile. Are they Italian? Anyways, let's uh, check it out, see what's inside the box. I feel like that was pretty good delivery. Pretty good. Okay, okay. <laughs> At that you don't have to look, you don't have to get me get the get the box there we go ooh very nice very small very compact we've got ourselves a new encoder so in the box so far we've got the new resi mini we'll talk about what's on the resi mini in a minute i have some learning to do about this guy and then we've got a power supply for it then they've also got hdmi cable so on the actual device itself, we've got HDMI in, HDMI out, uh, we've got display port, and then we've got our two network ports on the front. We've got USB connectivity. We've got normal USB 3.0, a couple 2.0 ports, and then a type C port. I'm excited to power this thing on and go inside Resi Studio and start messing around with it. And then I'm gonna test it out here at Rock Harbor Church. Uh, I actually just have been working on a lot of integration here at the church, building a new gear rack, putting a new video, switching and streaming system in. So I'm really excited uh, to test out the new Resi Mini Encoder and show you guys what it looks like to put this little guy to work. Welcome to my little mini video world over here. It's a very suitable place for the mini encoder. Well, this is actually gonna go on the rack, but we're just gonna talk about the encoder here. So the encoding process, before we even dive into the details of this guy, I wanna remind you what is the importance of an encoder in your church live streaming setup. Uh, a couple things. So the first thing is to be able to uh, properly compress uh, the video that you are producing from your video switcher, whatever your program output's gonna be, um, you want to compress that video and transcode it in a way that it's gonna be delivered online uh, in a very reliable and smooth way to all your online destinations, whether it's a uh, embed code on a website, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, other social media platforms. The encoder is all about that process. Not only is an encoder like this going to compress the video down into a codec that's going to look and sound great online for all your various streaming destinations, but a special Resi encoder like this one has their resilient streaming protocol built into it. So if you have a network like the one we have at my church here that is not super reliable, we haven't really gotten around to updating our IT infrastructure quite yet. Um, and in recent weeks, we've experienced issues where the internet connectivity kind of just drops out. Like we have decently fast internet here, but again, we have an old building. We've been going at a really fast pace trying to update a ton of infrastructure and the internet is just not super reliable. So I actually had some streaming issues the past couple weeks uh, using a traditional encoding uh, method. So that's why I'm really excited to try out the Resi encoder and specifically using Resi's resilient streaming protocol so that if we have network interruptions here at the church, um, the people who are viewing online, they're gonna never know anything happened. You could actually completely cut power and cut the uh, network feed for up to a couple minutes and the end viewer is not gonna notice anything happen. Of course, they're gonna be watching the stream at about a two minute delay, so it's important to take that into consideration. But I think it's totally worth it uh, if you have a not so great internet connection like our church does here and you wanna make sure you have uh, lossless video delivery to the end viewers. Setting up the Resi Mini Encoder is very simple. You really only need to connect uh, two things to it. You need your video input, which is gonna go to the HDMI in, and then you need your network input that goes into the LAN 1 or LAN 2 port. The HDMI out, which has a little blocker in it and the display port, uh, that's not gonna be used for the setup. It is such an easy system to install. When you open the box, you're gonna see a QR code on the box and then you can go to the link and they have this really handy setup guide specifically for the Resi Mini encoder. So it shows you where you supply the power to, where you plug in video, where you plug in your network connection. And then it even shows you some simple signal path diagrams if you have a single camera setup or a multi-camera setup. And what's cool about this encoder device, it pretty much is its own little standalone computer, but you don't need a keyboard, mouse, and monitor to actually see what's going on on the encoder. It's all gonna be managed over the network, over the cloud with Resi Studio. 
So let's first head on to the rack. I'll get this installed in just a few minutes and then we can head to front of house in Resi Studio and I'll show you how this is configured. Here is a new rack that I just built for our church and your setup does not need to be as complicated as this, but I'll show you just how easy it was to just plug and play the encoder into this system. And keep in mind, the encoder is so small, it's so portable, you could be using the encoder alongside of a, a single camera. Uh, you could be using it with something like an ATEM Mini. There are a lot of ways that you can configure this setup at your church, and you can definitely chat with the Resi team about what configuration is gonna make most sense for you. So in my rack here, I've got my video switcher. It takes all of my inputs and my outputs. And one of those outputs is going to have our program output, which shows the, the final line cut that the congregation online will see. And that feed is gonna get sent out of the switcher via SDI. And then I used a simple SDI to HDMI converter that's in the back of the rack. And then that HDMI cable goes into the back of the Resi encoder. Also in this situation, I'm sending audio to my video switcher. So that's where audio from my mixing setup is getting synced with the live stream video. I've got my stage box down here. The outputs go out of the stage box in the back of the video switcher. It gets synced up with video. And then from there, it goes to the Resi mini encoder. Now you're looking from the back side of the rack, you can see we have an HDMI input. That's how the video and audio signal gets into the encoder. And then we have a network connection. That's how the encoder connects to the cloud in Resi Studio. So setup is very simple. It took me all of about five minutes to get this guy installed and plugged in. And you can see in my rack, it only takes up a 1U space with this very compact shelf. So once the Resi Mini Encoder is plugged into a video and audio source and it has a network connection, you can hop on into Resi Studio, which is the online web-based application that allows you to uh, remotely control the encoder. This is where you can edit all the settings of your encoder and you can also schedule your live stream and get it set up for multi-streaming to different destinations like social media accounts or your church website. So you can see here in the dashboard, I've got my Resi Mini encoder and it is online and it says stopped because it's simply not running right now. If I wanted to, I could actually just hit the little play button right here and that would start the encoder. So if I head on over to settings, I can go to my device settings and then I'll go down to encoder presets. And these are some different presets that can be applied to our encoder. And of course I can adjust things such as uh, the frame rate and the bit rate of the stream. So if I go to actions, view details, uh, here we can see our input and output format um, and the bit rate per video channel. I can hit the edit button here. And this is where I could go ahead and change my input format if desired. Something that makes this setup so easy is that the Resi Mini Encoder has a auto detect feature when it comes to your resolution and frame rate for your video system. So we're running our system at 1080p, 30 frames a second, and over HDMI it goes into that encoder. And then here when I have it pulled up in Resi Studio, I can see the encoder settings and we can see the detected input is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, progressive. So I don't have to worry about dialing in what the actual video system settings are here on on the encoder side of things, it automatically detects what it should be. We run our broadcast in 1080p 30, and that works great for us, so I'm not gonna change any of those settings. The other important thing to set up under settings is your web settings. So this is how you can determine the destinations for your encoder's live stream. At our church, the way we do live streaming is we use an RTMP URL and stream key, and that's the destination for our encoder, which then is then sent out to our church app as well as social media. And it's really cool because you you can have the RTMP feature added on to your Resi account if you need it like we did. 
Next up, we have the scheduling feature for Resi, and this is really handy because that encoder will fire on and fire off at the right time, so you don't have to think about your church live stream. It will just happen. You need to make sure that your video input or your output from your switcher going into the encoder, it's gonna have the content on it that you want at that given time when it fires on. So under the scheduling section, you can see a calendar here. I'm gonna go to this coming Sunday. I'll do add event. We'll call this our eight 30 worship at Rock Harbor Church. We can put a description. I'm gonna select the Resi Mini encoder. The encoder is gonna turn on about 30 minutes prior to the stream. And this is great for us to be able to just monitor the encoder within Resi Studio. We're gonna be able to see it and preview it, make sure everything looks good and sounds good before it actually gets pushed out live to our destinations. Then we can actually schedule when the stream is going to start. So for our 8.30 service, I actually like to start it uh, about five five minutes left in our countdown. So I'll go 8.25 a.m. And then the duration of the service, uh, let's say that we want it to be at least an hour and 30 minutes long. So it's gonna end around 9.55 a.m. We're in the Eastern time zone. And then under here is where we add our content destinations. You can embed your live stream on your website, which is really great because then you, you control the stream and you're not leaving it up to social media platforms to allow that stream to happen. But of course, you can also send that live stream to Facebook and YouTube uh, and then anything else that uses RTMP. Like I said, we're using RTMP here at this church. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the RTMP destination I already set up. Up. And then we can see here the broadcast time, the encoder start time. This software is so slick when it comes to scheduling your church's live stream. So let's go ahead and press add. And then I'll go ahead and press save. And now we can actually see the event is on the calendar for Sunday. But there is one more thing I want to do. I actually want to make this a recurring event. So I'm gonna go in and edit it. And then I'll scroll down here and I'll hit the repeats button. And then I'm gonna say this needs to happen weekly every one week on Sunday in perpetuity, and then I'll just press save. And now when we go back to our event calendar, you'll see the live stream is set up for every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. And I'm gonna do the same thing for our 10.30 service as well. So then on Sunday morning, our volunteers are not worrying about pressing the go live button. They simply need to make sure at about five minutes prior to the service, the uh, slideshow that we play before the stream starts, as well as the countdown, uh, we wanna make sure that is live from our pro presenter input and that is what is showing on the program output for the video switcher. We already used this Resi mini encoder last Sunday at Rock Harbor Church and I was so pleased with the results. Like I mentioned before, we were having network issues at our church and that actually interrupted our stream uh, the week prior to switching to the Resi mini. But when we switched to the Resi mini, everything was flawless uh, when it came to delivering that content to social media platforms. And not only was it not interrupted, because of the resilient streaming protocol. It also just looked amazing and it sound amazing. We're, we're able to deliver that high fidelity video and audio to our viewers. So here's what it looked like. We stand here so grateful, every heart sing. Singing Jesus glorified forever. saying is, is even if your experience in life is not the mother that you would have hoped for, God is telling you in this text, I'm not going to be like that. Here at Rock Harbor Church, we're not using a super fancy or premium video and audio system, but I am very happy with the results we're getting with our live stream because we do have one great lighting in the room. We have great cameras that we're using, but again, they're not super fancy, super high-end cameras. When your lighting's right and you have a decent camera and you have a robust video infrastructure and then you have the right encoder in place like this Resi mini encoder, it's gonna look and sound great online for the end viewers. 
There you have it guys. That is my unboxing and review of the new Resi Mini Encoder. Be sure to check it out by clicking the link down below in the description. So head on over to their website to learn more and order your encoder today. I wanna thank Resi so much for sponsoring the video and sending me this encoder to use at our church here. And I'm so pumped only one weekend of using this encoder with the results we are already getting. But you guys have probably heard of Resi before because their encoders have been around a while and so many churches have been implementing them in their resilient streaming protocol to get their content online in a reliable and high quality way. So this encoder is not their first rodeo, but I am super pumped to see them offer a more budget friendly encoder for smaller to mid-sized churches. I know I'm gonna be recommending this encoder for a lot of the installs that we're doing here at Churchfront. Thanks so much for watching hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.